Our lives are enriched by pollinators every day. Simply by moving pollen from flower to flower, pollinators allow plants to produce seeds, nuts, and fruits, helping feed us and supporting the world's natural ecosystems. Many different animals pollinate, including butterflies and moths, flies, wasps, birds, bats, and other mammals. But the most important pollinators are bees, which actively collect pollen to feed their young. When you think about bees, the first bee that comes to mind is probably the honeybee, the most common pollinator of many food crops around the world, like almonds, cherries, blueberries, even coffee. The honeybee is one species that was brought to North America with colonists from Europe, but there are actually about 3,600 species of wild bees that are native to the United States and Canada. There are many different groups of native bees that come in all shapes and sizes, from carpenter bees, mining bees, sweat bees, to yellow-faced bees, and more. These wild bees don't just look different from domesticated honeybees, they also live differently. Most of them live solitary lives, with a single female doing all of the work to build a nest, collect pollen and nectar, and lay eggs. Unlike the honeybee, which lives above ground and can be managed in wooden hives, more than two out of three wild bees live underground in nests that can be hard to spot from the surface. Some dig down and lay their eggs several feet below ground, while others make nests near the soil surface. Other bees nest above ground in hollowed out plant stems or tunnels in old snags and logs. But why do we keep hearing about pollinator declines? What does it mean for us? And what can we do about it? Bees and other pollinators are threatened by many environmental stressors. Of these, some of the big ones are habitat loss and degradation, or loss of food sources and nesting areas. Climate change, which will have unpredictable impacts on plants and their pollinators. Pesticide use, which happens in both urban and agricultural areas. And diseases and pathogens which can in some cases be spread between the managed bees shipped around the country for pollination and the wild bees living around us. So what can we do to help? These are some big problems and some of them need big structural solutions. But the good news is we can all contribute to saving the bees by responding to these big threats, habitat loss, climate change, pesticides, diseases, in our own local communities. When we say save the bees, we're talking about all of the diverse bees living in and around our communities. Honeybees get much of the attention, but they're an actively managed, domesticated species, which means the honeybee is actually not at risk of extinction. There are thousands of species of wild living bees that could use our help. If you're wanting to help the bees in your communities, not to mention all the other kinds of pollinators, the best thing you can do is plant flowers. Adding habitat or food and shelter in your yard can make that space a haven for many pollinators. Even small patches or containers with flowering plants can help support the local bees that pollinate your apples, tomatoes, and melons, and the trees and other flowering plants that provide food for birds and other wildlife. When we support the bees, we support all other life in our communities. But what about the other big threats? climate change, pesticides, diseases, we can address those too when we plan our pollinator gardens. The key is planting diverse, locally adapted native species and taking care to avoid pesticide use in or near the plantings. The more locally adapted native plant species we have blooming throughout the year, the more types of pollinators will attract to our yards and the more resilient our yards will become to different risk factors like pests, extreme weather, and drought. If you have the time, consider organizing at the community level, raise awareness about pollinators, and help your town or college become a Bee City USA or Bee Campus USA affiliate by making commitments to create sustainable habitat for pollinators and reduce pesticide use. Get involved with a community science effort like Bumblebee Watch or the Western Monarch Milkweed Mapper to help researchers track and monitor rare and declining species of pollinators. For more information on these initiatives, and to learn more about how you can help bring back the pollinators in your communities, visit our website at xerces.org.